In other videos I've covered Hooke's Law, but uh, I'm going to look at this again and I'm going to have a look at how not just springs but elastic bands and perhaps plastic bags change when you put some weight on them and we'll look at what's called the limit of proportionality or the yield point as it's known as America. So let's have a look at an experiment to do this. What I've got is a setup behind me of a ruler and a spring. Let's see what that looks like. Now, what I've managed to set up here is a spring. You can just see the top of it with a weight hanging on it. Coming off the spring is a paper clip and I've bent the paper clip so it is roughly horizontal. Behind this I've got a clear ruler and behind this I've got a mirror and the idea is that I get my eye looking at this line I line it up with wherever it is on the ruler and I look also back at the mirror and what this does it makes sure that what I'm seeing is all in line with one another This is where my son discovers that he can be seen in the mirror as well. Right, so I've got this set up. It's got just 10 grams on it. It's, it's actually not doing any good. It's just holding it. So I've got that lined up on zero where my eye can see it. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to record some data here to do this is a very simple system. I've got simply two things I need to record. I need to record the mass and I need to record the extension. And with 10 grams of mass I've actually got this set up with zero extension. It doesn't seem to make any difference if I put the 10 grams on or not because what's happening is basically it's just holding it still. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to assume that's zero and we've set that there. So as I put on my masses now we'll see what the extension is with that different mass. So I'm going to put them up in 10 gram intervals. I'm going to get fed up writing that. And then once we've done this we can plot a graph of these masses against the extension and we're going to measure that in centimeters. Let's have a go and see what we can do. It's Quite a quick, quick experiment. experiment. What, what I'm going to do is put on 10 gram masses one at a time. So we've got our first one at zero. If I put on this and I hold it and get it as still as I can, then looking at this, this has made a massive difference. This is two millimeters. So that's going to be 0.2. Let's put on now this is 20 grams and getting my eye in line that is 1.1 centimeters you may see it's slightly different because the camera isn't quite in line with what we've got so there is 30 grams and if I can get my eye at the right level, that's 26, 2.6 centimetres. Now my next one's going to be in the wrong place. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to lower this mirror a little bit. And let's put on the next mass. So 
so I've got to get my head in the right position so that's about four another one on and get my eye at the right level that's about 5.4 60 grams and that's about 6.9 70 grams that's going to take it below the mirror so I'm going to lower the mirror yet again bouncing around rather a lot so let's try and stop it that's about 8.6 take it to 80 grams Ninety grams. Eleven point two. And I'm gonna do just one more. We could take this to a lot more, but it takes it beyond its elastic limit, which I'll show you in a moment. And my last one here. I've got at 12.7 so that gives me a set of data I'll just zoom out a little bit and that gives you the set of data so we can plot these now on a piece of graph paper and what I would be looking at is the ones that I'm changing it's going to go on one axis and the other one on the other one now which is the one that you do well what we do is we draw our graph with the one that I am changing here this is going to be my mass on this side so this I could put from 1 to 100 in fact I can just about get that in here on this piece of graph paper which is otherwise just an ordinary sheet of paper and I could put this up to about 12 I suppose I could do that and we could measure my extension here and I'm going to plot just a little bit of this just to give you a quick idea of what we've got this is not a proper graph this is just a quick bit so we've got 0, 0, this is 0 0.2 we've got so that's my extension at that mass at 20 we've got 1.1 1 .1. we've got 2.6 we've got 4 we've got 5.4 I've got it's going to go off the limit but we can see that we've got here a straight line and it's not quite doing the right thing at the bottom it 
it should with a steel spring often you see graphs go down but I've never managed to get this because the spring doesn't start acting until a certain mass is on it and it doesn't seem to do the right bit but here we've got something working within its limit of proportionality and this is one that didn't here one of my students put more weight on the spring and at a certain point this then was pulled out and once it was pulled out beyond a certain amount this spring didn't go back so we can pull this spring out and it will go back exactly as it was here this spring has been pulled out and now it won't go back it's gone past its yield point or I would say its limit of proportionality that was a steel spring and we can see that this follows Hooke's law Hooke's law the extension of the spring is directly proportional to the force applied with the proviso as long as its limit of proportionality is not exceeded let's do the same experiment again but I want to look at it this time with an elastic band and we can compare that with this one so what we're going to do is we're going to try exactly the same experiment except this time the mass I'm going to have to put down is going to have to be larger for this extension so let's have a look and see what we're going to do now we're going to zoom out a little bit on the camera because I'm going to get you to try and have a look and see what I'm setting up let's try and do that right, right so, so instead of using this spring what I'm going to use instead is this elastic band and to help I've previously stretched it now when you don't stretch it it causes some problems and it's in the wrong place at the moment so we're going to set it all up I've got a small hanger and you can see that that's not going to do much to it and let's bring this down and I want to set this at around about zero I'll bring the mirror up and what I'm going to do because I think this is going to be more interesting I'm going to bring my ruler down and I'm going to hold it much lower and what we're going to do is we're going to set this ruler my head's in the way but I set the ruler so that what we've got here is the ruler at zero the mirror lining up and there's my mass and what I'm going to do this time is I'm going to put slightly heavier masses on so instead of going up in tens this time I'm going to use slightly larger masses I'm going to go up in 50 grams at a time so I've just got 50 grams on here just to hold it so I'm going to assume that's going to be my zero point and what we're going to do is we're going to go up in 50s so I've got the paper ready to try and do this and what we want to do is make sure now I'm not doing this very much and so because I'm not pushing it anywhere near its yield point its limit of proportionality I'm not going to bother to wear safety specs because it's a not that a dangerous experiment but if I were going to be pushing something to its limit then I could put these on but I've looked at this experiment 
done it many times before I've taken the safety risk and it doesn't need anything to go the worst thing that can happen is the weights can drop on my foot and I've made sure my feet are out of the way and I've got a table underneath let's try this so we put on 50 grams and to be quite honest that's made about I think we'll be very generous and we'll say it's made 0.1 millimeters 100 grams and we've got a slight change here getting my head at the right point and that's about 0.9 30 grams sorry 150 and my little pointer's not pointing in the right nice place here uh, so let's get that right so that's about 3.1 so that's 150 grams 200 grams we're gonna have to move the mirror we are of course using a lot more mass than we did with the spring and we're doing that because the response on this is different and that's 8.6 250 grams and I'm barely going to be in my mirror here thirteen point six I will have to lower the mirror again and we're going to go to three hundred grams and I've got to get my head just in the right place to get this right so I think that's about 18.8 go a little bit more so we're on there 350 grams and at 350 grams I'm on 20 23.1 400 grams and at 400 grams I'm below the mirror yet again and this is going to give me twenty seven point one my last one three hundred and one and we'll take that off Let's go over and have a look and see how these appear. So here we've got this set of results. The mass going up to 450, the extension a little bit different. Now I'm rushing this and doing it quite quickly. What you can do with this experiment is you can do this and then you can take the masses off and if you take the masses off you will see that the numbers will actually change I haven't bothered with trying to do this but uh, something we can do right so if we try and draw a quick graph of this then if I do each one 
uh, each 50 as just one so we can do this as 50 100 150 200 250 300 350 400 450 and I want to put in here my extension and I'll do each one of these as three which is a grotty measurement but I'm just going to do it this way quickly so that's going to be three six nine twelve and that's going to give me that Remember, I'm plotting this really, really quickly, not trying to do anything accurate, just trying to give, at the moment, an idea of what's happening. So, we've got our graph. Now, 0 was 0, and then 50 was 0.1. 100 was 0 0.9 100 made 150 made 3 that made 8.6 then we get 13.6 and then we're going to get 18.8 then we're going to get 23 then we're going to get 27 and then we're going to get about 30 and you can see that this graph far from being a straight line is in fact quite a different shape. We've got some sort of weird thing going on. So this is my rubber band. And when I bring it back, you might find it could even do that sort of shape. It will go up and down differently. More of that if you want to study A-level. Right, we've got a third to have a look at. And this one is gonna be a little bit different. Now, have you ever thought of going and buying some goods and putting it in a plastic bag? And what can you tell me about these plastic bags? Well, what you do is you buy a plastic bag and what I've done is I've taken a strip. And what I'm going to do with this is show you how I did this. So I've got my plastic bag and what I've done is I've put in a board behind here and what I'm going to do is I'm simply going to put my ruler down and I've got my scalpel and what I'm going to do is I'm just going to take here a little slice and I want to take something which is about a centimetre and a half wide bottom off and the top and there I've got two plastic strips that I can compare now with these plastic strips what I'm going to do I'm going to do twice uh, these are from two well-known English manufacturers uh, and what I'm going to do 
is I've got a special plastic strip tester. Now it's got some jaws that open up and what I'm going to do is I'm going to take the piece of plastic I'm going to fold it over and then I'm going to push this through here. Now to make it fair what we're going to do is going to put a plastic a metal rod through the plastic I'm then going to pull this down so the rod is actually holding this up. I'll screw it up. So it's the plastics not being sort of held by anything specific. It's just being clamped here. So I'm not likely to break it. I've seen some teachers when they do this, they, they like to rip this plastic to make it go. Honestly, you don't need to do that at all plastic is perfectly fine at doing this experiment. I'm going to fold the other end and push this through. I've got to put my hand in the way unfortunately because I'm trying to do it. Let's put the metal rod in and we can tighten this up. Pull it now, hold it tight, and we'll lock it in place. So that's all locked in nicely in place. My cameraman's not paying attention. And we're ready to go. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to bring the retort stand back. And this time I'm going to turn this rod around. And I'm just going to stick this through here. Giving it a fair bit of height. Now this is, because I've done this before and I know what's going to happen. This time, I am going to wear my safety specs. Because I know what's going to happen. And this one, I live in fear of my feet. So I'm going to make sure my feet are well out of the way. And what we're going to do is we're not going to put small weights on here. Instead, what we're going to do, we're going to put these kilogram weights on. And it's going to take probably in the region of one to two kilograms to do this. Let's take this off and quite quickly. I'm going to put my hanger on here and we're ready to start. Right now can you see that okay? Should I push that there? Okay here we go. We're just going to do this to find out at what point does this break. I could do it by measuring the extension and that's a worthy experiment to do but we're not going to do that this time. So here we go. So that's 200, nothing, 300, nothing, 400, nothing. The bag is looking sort of a little bit tight, but nothing much. 500, 600. We've got lines here showing some sort of stress. So that is 600, 700, 800, 900. Now 900, I've seen some stretching. And I'm not touching it. And this is going down and down and down and it stopped and it broke uh, perhaps I've had a little bit of practice of this but we can see this piece of plastic has sort of 
it's gone really hasn't it it's sort of if someone gave you a, a plastic bag like this you would be, not be impressed so I, I don't want to mention the name of the company that made this one because Waitrose would get really upset so we'll have a look at a different bag made by a different company and I'm just going to take the system to bits and we'll try and see how this compares with a plastic bag from another company so that was from one manufacturer that was a Waitrose plastic bag this one is from another company it said Marks and Spencers on the bag so I guess that's who it's for and we'll see if this bag is any different so we'll put the weight the bat thing in we'll put the piece of metal in there pull it down so it's holding it nicely we want to try and make sure this is as fair a test as possible so that's held quite securely let's do the other end so I'll fold it over we'll open up the jaws push this one through metal is not going through that way one thing trying to do it the second one is trying to hold it up and show people what you're doing so we've got this bar being held and we're going to run the same experiment last time we tried 900 and it broke so let's see where this one breaks I know it's not going to break on the early ones but in fairness we need to do the experiment the same way so I've got 100 grams to start with right let's have a go 200 300 400 500 oh dear so that one, 500 grams, that one broke. What's important when you're trying to do this is to make sure you use the same width of plastic bag to ensure that you get a same result. Now this one broke very differently than the other one. This one sort of snapped along the line. Whereas the other one went much more on its plastic breaking and that's what I found with these bags these you can pull and sometimes they stretch and sometimes when you pull these very quickly they break and this plastic has very different properties that if you pull it slowly which is what I was trying to do it's going to break but it breaks at a very low tensile strength very low whereas if you pull it very quick it just breaks all of a sudden and I found with these bags that when you put in an extra 100 grams it suddenly causes it to snap it's the sort of bag that you would get that if you try when you're putting your shopping in with one of the bags you put it in and it gradually sort of 
stretches and you think, oh, I'm going to put any more in there. This type of bag you put in and it's suddenly everything's thrown on the floor. Now, it depends what you're buying in your bag, I suppose. If you're a manufacturer and you're selling clothes, then it can be fairly light. If you're selling sort of food, then that might be a bit different. And uh, that's what we've got. So, three experiments there, having a look at forces and elasticity. We've looked at then Hooke's Law. Hooke's Law says that basically, if I zoom in a bit, there we go, I've got the right button, that the force applied equals something which we'll call the spring constant times the extension. And our spring constant we get by looking at something like this and measuring here the gradient. And this is in Newton meters. Our force obviously in Newtons and our extension. I've measured mine in centimeters. But for doing the calculations we'd need to do that one in meters and rather than applying a mass then we'd need to use this with a force and if we remember that our force which is our weight here is going to be the mass times the acceleration due to gravity which we know as 9.8 so whatever our mass is, then we can work out what we've got. So if my mass is here one kilogram, then that's going to give me a force here of 9.8 newtons. So let's just make sure we know what we're talking about. We can stretch a spring so much beyond that the yield point or its limit of proportionality the spring doesn't go back when we stretch an elastic band the elastic band doesn't stretch according to Hooke's law it doesn't stretch in a standard way and when it goes back it doesn't go back in the same way and with this one we can see that down the bottom there, although that's a new elastic band, there's a weak point there. That's where it's going to break. And if I were to pull it lots, that's where it's going to break. So, one other problem that people get when they do this experiment is what they do is they just set up the retort stand what they don't do which i do is i put a mirror in here they then put a ruler and then we can put in our spring and I like to put in some sort of horizontal measurement and then I can set my eye to look at this and that to make sure it's all in line. Now that's okay. The other one is I also set my ruler to zero. If you don't, what you have to do to work out the extension is you need to work out the length at a point and from that you have to take away 
the length at the start. I'm too lazy to do that so I set this to be zero at the start. So our spring constant is the gradient of my line. So when we look at this graph, if we've got this sort of relationship, this is my spring, then the gradient here equals my spring constant. And that's going to be different for each type of spring. So whether you've got a long spring, short spring, a fat one or whatever, it's going to be rather different. If you take a spring past its limit of proportionality, then that spring is now useless. And the only thing it's any good for now is to show a student that's what it looks like if you stretch it beyond its limit of proportionality. So there were a few little experiments, three experiments to have a look at. You could work on your own. You've got my results, which you can pause the video and have a look at those so that you can use those if you need to. Thank you for watching. If you enjoyed this, good. And I will see you next time when we do some more GCSE physics, topic by topic. Stay safe. Bye-bye.